The rock band Nelson are a part of a family legacy of music that includes Ricky Nelson and Ozzy and Harriet Nelson. Nelson has contributed five top 40 hits and sold over 13 million albums worldwide themselves as a part of it. Today, Matthew and Gunnar share what legacy means to them. Welcome to Lifestyle Magazine. We're joined today by Matthew and Gunnar Nelson of the multi-platinum rock group, Nelson. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks for having us. Thank so you. So which one's Matthew? Which one's Gunnar? I'm sorry. <laughs> we, we switch off odd and even days. We flipped a coin. I'm Matthew today. You're Matthew yeah. today. This is the other one. So I want the, yeah, I want the Chiron to read Matthew Nelson and the other one. And okay. the other one. Because <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to read Matthew Nelson on the talent. <laughs> That's right. Okay. But I want to be able to read the Chiron too because I forget who I am sometimes. <laughs> well, the fact is that your family's got a long legacy of show business from your grandfather in music and in television, your dad the same, and now you guys. What what does that mean to you? Well, it means a lot. When we found out that we hit number one on our birthday, our 22nd birthday, oh, awesome. um, we're the only family, I guess, according to the Guinness Book, to have three successive generations of number one hit makers in it, mm -hmm. which is mm. pretty awesome. Um, it actually, the family started in, in entertainment before that. Mm -hmm. uh, local shows, things like that. Our grandmother Harriet's mother was a twin. Oh, come on. And Yeah, and they were uh, they were called Hazel and Hattie. And at the turn of the last century, they were vaudevillians. So it's even more generations than what I thought. It, it goes is. back. Appar apparently, one side of our family came to the United States as circus performers from Europe. Come on. And it's just uh, something that we've all... And the circus continues. I think and it, it does. A... <laughs> it was Hagen Beck Wallace. That was the circus. That's right. Yeah. And they got right. absorbed by Ringling. Yeah. After that, and is that something to live up to, or is it just something that's fun in your past? What, what is or it? Or something to hide from? <laughs> or hide from <laughs> either? <laughs> yeah, you know, it really, honestly, is something to be really proud of. Yeah. It really, truly has been the family business. I mean, yeah. it doesn't really matter entertainment or not. If you come from a family that does it, it's great social proof to have around. Yeah, you know that it's oh, yeah. possible to to do it, yeah. and uh, and hopefully uh, achieve at a really high level. Mm -hmm. But it all comes down to a work ethic, and every generation of Nelson has done something, has done something that's very specific. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and applicable to their generation. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Oz had his big band and had his number one in 35, uh -huh, I think it was. Right? Yeah. And then our dad, dad had a bunch of them. Well, oh, he yeah, had yeah. Traveling Man and Hello, Mary Lou. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it was a very specific sound. And, uh, but we actually grew up when he was in reinventing himself with something called the Stone Canyon Band, which oh, was yeah, a country yeah, yeah. rock thing. Yeah. And I think the focus was really on him writing for the first time. He encouraged yeah. us to be songwriters. And I think that the neat thing is he would have been most proud of the fact that we wrote our own number one hit. Which that is cool. Our Actually, he'd be most dad. proud of the fact that we still get along with each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's even Second thing that we write ourselves. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You said he encouraged you to write music. So, sure. you know, is, is the legacy something that you wanted to continue? Did you kind of feel pushed into it? Is this something oh, that you really... That's a good question. Huh. That's a good question. Uh, I never felt pressured into it. As a matter of fact, Gunnar and I had something really different. Our dad gave us instruments. Gunnar got his first drum kit when he was six. I was seven when Sorry. I got my first yeah. bass. Uh -huh. We started playing clubs and recording when we were 12. And it was one of those things where we wanted to do it. It oh, was never yeah. something that was pushed on us. As a matter of fact, our mother, who had survived a tumultuous relationship in the 70s with our father, frankly wanted us to do anything hmm. but play music and oh, made, really? it, made it very difficult. I think she blamed us. the fact that he was gone a lot and the, the excess of... 70s mm -hmm. rock and roll and the lifestyle yeah. with the demise of their marriage. Uh -huh. And uh, you know, she was having a, a struggle at the time anyways too, and he wasn't around, obviously they'd separated. And we reminded her so much of our father in so many ways. Please don't play music. Exactly. Well, right. yeah, it, yeah. It, was, it got to a point when unfortunately they split up and yeah. uh, they moved across town from each other. And I remember Gunnar and I were 14, 15 years old and our mother insisted that we move our musical instruments out of her house wow. into our father's, really? which was basically yeah. her way of killing Yes. our musical aspirations mm -hmm. because we couldn't get around. Right. So Gunnar and I got uh, after school jobs to pay a senior in high school to drive us to band rehearsal two or three times a week, oh, really? which actually worked for us because not only we, we had some rehearsal time, but we got some time with our father when he would come off the road that was just one-on-one. -on -one. It was actually, it worked out really well. Yeah. Well, this is something you really wanted. Yeah. And uh, seeing your mom and dad, did you take any lessons into uh, future relationships that you didn't want that well, to happen? Well, we, we say, you know, a lot. The only thing better than a, a, a good Good example is a good bad example. Good, yeah. and and we actually good. had front row seats for that whole thing. <laughs> a good bad you know? example, yeah. And uh, it was it, weird because in our family, you know, yeah. when people get into fights like that, it becomes either it's before social media, it was public, it was yeah. newspapers. Uh, I think Gunnar and I were up at, at summer camp and found out that our parents were splitting up oh, on man, the radio. Tough. Well, yeah. it's well, just kind of our thing. We found out our father had passed away yeah. actually on a car radio, and we were living yeah. with him. So it's yeah. one of those things where we've we've known just growing up in our family that 
there's not as much of the same sense of certain things are private. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, that's got to be tough. Well, we also yeah. understand too, like in, a, in the case of our father's death and learning about him on the radio. I learned actually on TV. I walked into a TV program, yeah. and uh, Matthew heard it on the radio. With all these years since. I think we've gotten more comfortable with the fact that, in a very real sense, people feel like they're part of our family. Yeah. yeah. And this is really, Gunnar and I have been through an awful lot by ourselves in our own right. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of things that we've been through that we truly believe, I know I do, that I wouldn't have made it through without having a twin. It's God, mm -hmm. God actually provided mm -hmm. for us. We need that each other. Better? I really do. Yeah. I, I, I think the reason why we, we came into this world twins is because with, with some of the things we've had to, mm -hmm. to endure, I mean, having a best friend there all the time mm -hmm. that, that knew you better than anybody else yeah, and had your you back, yeah. you know, we needed it. We yeah. really honestly did. And, and that was really the catchphrase around the family, mm -hmm. uh, for better or worse, is all the twins always have each other. They yeah. always have each other. And we fun. actually, yeah, I remember we resented that. But the truth was when things got so incredibly yeah. uh, insane for us, I mean, there was a point in time where we couldn't be seen out in public on a day off together. We'd cause riots. Oh, man. oh really? Fortunately, I'm yeah. here to say that that does go away. Yeah. <laughs> but for a while there, it was really scary. And yeah. the, the truth was we needed yeah. each other to just keep each other Real. Yeah. Can, I, I want to change gears just a little bit because sure. we're about out of time here. Ah. I know that you've had a re-release of mm -hmm. the album that had your number one hit on it. Mm -hmm. Is that right? We, That's right. We, did. we, yeah. we, uh, we actually re-released it on 180 gram collector grade vinyl, the heavy vinyl. Oh, wow. oh, really? Vinyl's what? back. You yes. know, it's a, and yeah. uh, they usually only pick records that made an impact or had some sort of significance to yeah. it. And, you know, we were really the last uh, band to break during that whole confidence rock era before mm -hmm. the rise of Seattle and grunge mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah. But the record that we made was very different. We were speaking from the point of view of the disenfranchised to the disenfranchised. Yeah. You know, we always considered we were kind of the walking wounded going through what we'd gone through. Yeah, That's why we course. named the record after the rain. Yeah. But um, mm -hmm. it really spoke to a generation of kids who uh, who needed a friend. And yeah. music's always been our friend too. Yeah. So we just kind of wanted. It's to very touching to share music. That. I mean, it's fun music. It, yeah. It is yeah. It is, and I think I like the fact that people have come around to understanding that music really should be experienced, and that's mm -hmm. the nice thing about the vinyl is that it really is from the, the moment you drop the needle on mm -hmm. the first song, you pay attention. Yeah, it's that's not awesome. in the background anymore like so much yes. music yeah. is today. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. we always wanted to be positive without, uh, mm -hmm. you know, without telling people how to live or anything yeah. like yeah. that. It's just it works for us. We're going to take a break now, but when we come back, your wife Carrie, Matthew's wife Carrie, is going to join us. So awesome. we'll be right back after this. We are with Matthew and Carrie Nelson right now, and Matthew is the son of Ricky Nelson, grandson of Ozzy and Harriet Nelson. So we got this whole family legacy thing going on with you. Well, yeah, don't forget the Harmons, too. Uh, the Harmons, that's right. right. Uncle Mark Harmon is doing pretty well right now. Uncle Gibbs. Ah, oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. That's Grandpa wonderful. won the Heisman at Michigan in 1940, Tom Harmon. Man. Wow. You know, so we were lucky. Yeah, you are lucky. Yeah. Made for interesting Christmases. I'll yeah, tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anyone in your family who's not famous? Uh, well, we have, you know, a, a second cousin. <laughs> 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 She's well, famous in my world. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but you do have this whole family tradition thing going on and this family legacy, and you, you decided to continue that with the birth of your son as you named him. Tell me about that. Well, we, uh, we were talking about names, and we were thinking about, of course, it's a little boy, a little girl, and for some reason it just made sense that the two best people that I knew, I mean, we talked about it, they're obviously on both sides of the family, people that we really admired, but, uh, but our grand, my grandfather Ozzy, and of course mm -hmm. my grandmother Harriet, so it was gonna yeah. be either or, to be yeah. honest with you. And so he got the name Ozzy. He got the that's, name Ozzy. That's awesome. It's true, and, and when we looked up uh, what, uh, what the name meant, actually, you know, there, there are all these baby books, yeah. and you looked up Ozzy and that spelling. It meant trying, strong. It meant strong. strength, you know, or strong yeah. leader or something like that. Yeah. And, and his middle name is Matthew after his papa, yeah. and that meant gift of Yahweh. And I yeah. believe it's gift a, of God. In mm -hmm. Yeah, in so Hebrew. he really is God's gift. He, so. he is God's gift to you. Yeah. That's wonderful. <laughs> That's great. What does a family legacy, what's that mean to you? What type of family legacy would you like to leave? Well, we're Ozzie. both grandparents, you know, mm -hmm. uh, twice now, little boy and a little girl. Carrie had a, a family before we met, mm -hmm. and uh, they were grown and pretty much fully, yeah. fully developed. Yeah. Uh, but for, for me, I think, um, I, I can only hope that I can leave behind some sort of a, a legacy like my grandparents did or my dad did. You know, uh, we still meet people on a daily basis doing what we do that either had an experience with them yeah. Uh, that went beyond seeing them in concert or something. Mm -hmm. They always took time. They were always genuinely sweet people. 
and I hope that's what we leave behind. I think that's the most important thing. You got such a beautiful little picture of this of this family here, this little nucleus. But surely the two of you have had disagreements. I mean, how do you celebrate? Oh, we're married. Those? We're sure. married. <laughs> <laughs> We've been together what eight years? That's yeah, right. Of course, so, so of course, how do you it's solve part those? of it. Uh, well, um, I think what it really comes down to is no matter what, at the end of the day, we still love each other and we respect each other. And that's usually how, if we get into an argument, that's how we end it, mm -hmm. yeah. which is uh, we simmer down and then we, we usually talk about it. Talk about it and, and I guess that's what it comes down to. So the communication is still there. Communication is key. It's key. It's mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. It's everything. You, you mentioned uh, that uh, his middle name is Matthew, mm -hmm. Gift of Yahweh. So is faith an important part of this for you? God has to be at the center of every marriage, I think. I mean, we're you know, both really down with that. That's yeah. our that's our belief. Yeah. You know, He's with us all the time and He's the center of our house. Yeah. That's what it's all about. How does that look? How does that operate daily? How does that operate? Yeah, with Him being the center of the marriage. <laughs> What's that look like? What does it look like? Yeah. Uh, How does it work? Well, we, we try to make church as much as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, Ozzy reading. is actually pretty, pretty good, reading a lot. Re She's reading the Bible and yes. studying the Bible and mm -hmm. teaching Him praying, mm -hmm. you know, we, teaching him he can just talk to God at any time. It right, doesn't have to necessarily right. be at the dinner table. It's, you know. Seeing that faith through a child's eyes yeah. so, uh, is instructive, isn't it? It, it really, it, it truly is. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's the big lesson. I mean, I waited until much later to have my first child with Ozzy and mm -hmm. uh, experienced a lot in life. And I really uh, learned a whole different perspective when he was born. Yeah. Well, I think too, and I'm sorry to interrupt no, you, but I really think that, you know, we find out through our children how God feels about us, exactly. what the what the relationship is, exactly. That's true. you know, and how you can love someone and, and mm -hmm. still be, you know, you get yeah. angry. Well, it's, it's neat too, because uh, we kind of came from different worlds. I mean, Carrie is from going? the Midwest. She's from Iowa. Yeah. And I'm from California. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I have to say that, uh, it was uh, living in, in Los Angeles, for instance, and growing up in the entertainment world. It's a little bit more challenging in, in certain respects yeah. to stay to stay imagine. that connected to God. Uh -huh. You have to really make a concerted effort mm -hmm. to it. And when we visit uh, her family uh, in in Iowa, in, uh, Northeast Iowa, it's such a part of life. Yeah. It's it's such a common. And, and I actually really I really love it. I feel. Uh, very connected to that part. Of, it's interesting, my brother and I had most of our success in the Midwest. Yeah. And our dad was the same way, yeah. Ozzie and Harriet, the yeah. same way. Mm -hmm. Yet we were all living on the coast, but we understood. But they still typified like, those kinds yeah. of values, the Midwestern values, family, yeah. faith. Uh, it's true. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it was said that um, uh, our grandfather Ozzie, basically his life was applied religion, even though he yeah. didn't really preach about it a lot. Mm -hmm. He lived it. And I think that's what it was. I and mean, he's the world's youngest Eagle Scout still at 12. Yeah, really? And you know, had a law degree from Rutgers. Yeah. You know, led a big band for 14 years without reading yeah. a stitch of music. Yeah. And had number one records. That's I incredible. Mean, yeah. He wrote and produced, directed yeah. every show. So I think what it came down to was, uh, I think God was a part of his life too because mm -hmm. he learned from a very young age that it was, uh, you have faith and you, you move forward. Mm -hmm. And you take it as it comes. And yeah. Boy, people, uh, I, I do, but people that I've met that worked with the man adored him. Yeah. They really did. They loved him. I've not heard any stories to the contrary No, that. not at all. Mm -hmm. uh, we're about out of time for this segment. Oh. But, but yeah, which is awful. <laughs> but i got to tell you, I've raised daughters, and I've often said that parenting is the most guilt-producing thing I've ever done in my life. Do you find yes. that to be true as well? Mm -hmm. I feel better already. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Well, the way you did it. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, again, this is my first time around. It's really nice to have, um, you know, I think my wife is, is th you know, uh, thankfully the, the center of, rationality in my household because yeah. I, I wind up being good time dad, especially yeah. when I spend a lot of time yeah. gone uh, playing shows and things like that. Um, boy, that's tough. Yeah. I, it's yeah. really hard leaving this guy and leaving my wife. Yeah. It really is. Thank goodness for Apple and FaceTime. Yes. That's yeah. true. Yeah. That's cool. And um, and honestly for, you know, keeping keeping God around and yeah. realizing that this is all part of it. Well, you getting tired there, Ace? I want to thank the two of you for being a part of this segment. And oh, you too, you. Ozzie. Hey, thank Ozzie, you, can you say thank, thank you? you? Awesome. <laughs> we'll be right back with more right after this. We're joined now by Gunnar Nelson of the multi-platinum rock group Nelson and his lovely wife, Lila. Thank you for joining us, Lila. Thank you for having me. You bet. <laughs> now, Gunnar, you came to a point where you decided it was time to make a change from the life you were living you know, it really wasn't uh, something I, I had a, a, a lot to do with at the moment. I mean, they talk about love at first sight. Mm -hmm. I really had one of those experiences. I've been writing about it my whole life, but yeah. but uh, hadn't really 
thought it was possible until went to a little gig that we had in the middle of nowhere. It was impossible to get to. It was in the middle of the desert. Yeah. And it was a favor for a friend, and, and uh, we'd just come off of a long run of gigs, and I was tired and cranky. And I got out of the car, and I looked up, and I saw Lila and our three daughters uh, about 100 yards away, and I just made that, that mm. soul connection. I knew right, right then. How about you, Lila? Did you know? I knew 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been Tell a Nelson fan that. for a long Come on. time. Come on, is that right? uh, true story, my mom told me I was going to marry Gunner in 1991. And I thought no. she was crazy. Mm -hmm. I really was like, oh my God. My mom passed away, unfortunately, two oh. weeks before we met. Oh, oh dear. And uh, prior to that, my ex-husband passed away mm -hmm. as well. We'd had a rough year mm -hmm. and uh, just wanted to get to living and took the girls mm -hmm. down to their first show. Saw it on mm -hmm. Facebook. They were playing down there. Yeah. Loaded them up in the family truckster and went down, but I didn't, I wasn't looking into it. I, mm -hmm. I saw him and, you know, the knees got weak and the whole thing, but it was yeah. Gunnar Nelson. So how do you discern whether it's love at first sight or yeah. you're just like, oh my gosh, yeah. you're yeah. the Gunner most beautiful thing How did you make seen. contact that night? How did, uh, you saw uh, each other, but it didn't well, end no, eye we, contact. Well, when I actually got to the show, it was one of those days of planes, trains, and automobiles. We yeah. were really late and I, I had to rush to get through a sound check to start the show. Mm -hmm. But I had five minutes to freshen up before the show, and I had to walk past the crowd, and I stopped in front of Lila, and I just totally forgot myself. And she, she actually kind of shook me out of it by saying, hello, I'm Lila. It was the most awkward five seconds of my life yeah. standing there with this person. But it, it, was, uh, it was really intense for me. It really was, because up until that point, a lot of things had been going on with me. I, yeah. I was 45, which was the age... Uh, my father was when he died. And mm -hmm. for some reason, I felt like I wasn't going to get more time than that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that birthday had come and gone. And, uh, and I realized I really wasn't that happy in my life. Yeah. I'd accomplished a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And uh, I was successful in, in all of the ways that didn't really matter. Mm -hmm. And I realized that at 45 that I felt kind of empty. And I didn't really realize uh, how much I'd been faking it until I met her and the girls. Yeah. So, and then everything changed. Yeah. How long did has everything changed, but how long did that take? I mean, did you just up and move or what was the process? It was pretty of, quick. It was, uh, fast. It was it was, it was fast. fast. I mean she was like, whoa, 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 slow down. And but but I, I I really I really did know. I mean I really did. And it wasn't something that I was looking for. I want to make that clear yeah. at all. I pretty much I got kind of I got comfortable with the idea that I was going to be uh, just a single guy for the rest of my yeah. life. I'd, my window had come and gone, that I'd mm -hmm. spent my life on the road and lived a selfish life and, mm -hmm. and played the field a lot. A lot, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and it just didn't bring me any happiness. Yeah. And I didn't realize that until uh, that had been filled up and everything with me had changed. Well, and although this is a great love story, you've had your ups and downs, haven't you? We've had our moments. <laughs> We're married, right? We are married. Okay, we are it's married. good to know that. We yeah. have had our moments. Yeah. There was some, some little bumps in the road and some yeah. hiccups along the way. How do you solve that? Um, lots of discussion and lots of hugs and mm -hmm. lots of understanding because mm -hmm. we both got to a point in our lives that I really think that we knew we both grabbed the brass ring and that this was it for both of us mm -hmm. and that it was worth it. So we just yeah. loved each other through it. But I, I mean, I really feel that we were both guided by Mm -hmm. by God and by our love of each other. And uh, we, it was definitely meant to be. So there's there. a spiritual component to this as well, isn't Absolutely. Oh, well, God's a big part of our marriage. Yeah. Always God has is been. number How does one. that look? How does that work? Well, you know, when you feel like, uh, you know, ultimately you're being watched over and, mm -hmm. and that Protecting. someone's helping you make decisions mm -hmm. for yourself yeah. that that are better than what you would normally choose for mm -hmm. yourself. You don't realize it until after the fact. Mm -hmm. There's no way in the world this could have happened or come together without God's yeah. direct intervention in all of this. Gunnar, you, you're living, you got four women. <laughs> you're a washing an ocean of estrogen. I'm just the guy for that job, I'm telling you. <laughs> a, wash, <laughs> I'm the guy. A, a wash in an ocean of estrogen. Yes, how, that's right. How does that work for you, man? I love it. I do, I love it. Well, you're the father of, of two daughters I, I as daughters, well. Yeah. So you know what that's like. Yes, I do. Um, you know, it's, a, it's I used to make a, a joke about it, you know, just with uh, how much of a bachelor I had been up until the time we had met that, you know, God has a sense of humor and was giving me three daughters to yeah. be on the other side of the, <laughs> of, of the, the parental yeah. equation. But, um, but, you know, to me, it's, it's really such a blessing. They're all um, very different and very sensitive mm -hmm. and um, very caring. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I mean... We, we don't make a big deal out of it, but we are a family that stops before meals and mm -hmm. prays. And yes. when things are rough, yeah. we mm -hmm. 
We you pray. Know, we, we, we pray. Yeah. And they couldn't have a better protector. Because yeah. you've well, been on the other side, and you know what's going on. I'm, but look, when, when, a, when, a, oh, yeah. when a gentleman caller comes over to the house and all that stuff, I am Thor the protector. Who <laughs> are you? I am. Never smile. I never smile at a boy yeah. that comes over the house. Give him any hope, buddy. <laughs> yeah. but, it, but it's, you know, honestly, I, they, they, um, I, I always say, too, I have to give my wife credit because mm. I came along when all the heavy lifting was done. Yeah. And they had been through She's a lot. I mean, they really had been through yeah. a lot. and. Yeah. And uh, Lila and the girls, they all have every yeah. reason in the world and every excuse in the world to yeah. have uh, grown up uh, messed up and bitter well, and angry. Well, that's, that's a good note to end this on with you praising your wife. Yes. And, and we're going to believe you. We're going to leave it at that. You should. And we'll be right back with Matthew and Gunnar with a final thought right after this. We've had a wonderful time with the entire Nelson family. And so as we close, guys, what kind of a legacy do you want to leave? Well, you know, all these years later, we realized that it's really not about music. Grandma Harry had always said that the Nelson family's never been in the music business or in, mm -hmm. even in the entertainment business. Mm -hmm. We've been in the connection business. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. And so that's what the family's always been about. So mm -hmm. for us, you know, music has really been a means to an end. Yeah. And it's about connecting with people. It's about your family, your faith, your yeah. friends, your loved ones, the stuff that's real. Yeah. And uh, the stuff that, um, that I, I don't think we see enough of. Oh, nowadays. Yeah. We're here to tell you that fame comes and goes. Our dad used to say a career is nothing but a series of comebacks. And he did leave behind an amazing mm -hmm. wealth of inf uh, information, yeah. film, you know, music. Yeah. But I think what I'm more proud of than anything is when I meet people and say, your father was a genuinely sweet person. Yeah. Awesome. And I hope that uh, Gunnar and I continue that legacy. We always meet people after our shows. We always take time for people. Wonderful. And hopefully we're raising children that reflect that same. Well, if this, if this show is any indication, mm. you're doing well with that. So thank oh, you so much thank for you. being thank here, you. guys. Thanks for having us. And thank you for being a part of this one as well. We look forward to seeing you again next time. But until then, you take care of yourself.